Hello, everybody. Welcome to Abba's Hand. And I know it's been a while, but just like I said in one of my past videos, I am finally making a tutorial on how to create an active ragdoll. I'm gonna go step by step in one video, and I'm hoping that it's gonna be easy to understand and straightforward. Now let's get into it. First of all, this can be done with, I believe, about any 3D model. I've experimented with it quite a bit, and between trying to understand how it really worked and being preoccupied is why this tutorial took me so long, I'm sorry, but whatever the case, I um, have labeled everything here so that you can hopefully keep up with the bones in the model that I'm using easier. As you can see here, I selected all of the bones, not including the bone ends, and I attached the configurable joint component to them, which will automatically give you the rigid body, and I have also attached a box collider to all of the bones. That's why you see the boxes around the various body parts of the model. Now, you want to attach all of the bones to each other. For example, I just grabbed the foot and I'm about to drag and drop the lower leg into that slot. Of course, with the corresponding left to right limb. And then I'm going to select the lower leg and grab the upper leg and drag that in as well as you just saw. Then grab the upper leg and put the bone, the base bone into that slot. Then rinse and repeat for all of the other limbs. Attach the hand, if you have a hand in the model, to the lower arm and the lower arm to the upper arm, the head to the neck and the neck to the torso, and so on and so forth. And don't forget to attach the upper arm to the chest or torso part of the model. Afterward, after everything is attached, if you don't already have the box collider attached to the bones, you just select all of them, give them a box collider, and if it looks like this, don't worry. All you have to do is go to the size part of the box collider component and set it each to 0.01. That will shrink them down, and afterward, you could just click the edit button on the box colliders, the thing that allows you to manually edit the box colliders, and then just stretch them and pull them into the shape you want, depending on which bone they're attached to. That's why they look stretched out and differently sized on my original model that I showed you. I just redid this to show you what's going on. I don't like it when tutorials skip steps and you have to find your way through, so I just wanted to show you that. Now this step is very important. Grab every bone except the base bone, and what you want to do is you want to go here and you want to make sure that the first three options here are set to locked. All you got to do is click them and select locked for each of them. Not the base bone because these will keep the limbs in place. The base bone can remain free so that it can actually move around and not be stuck in place. Then you can scroll down to where it says angular X drive and angular Y drive and you could set it to 500 or however high you want. This will allow the model to retain its pose. It will flop around because obviously it's a ragdoll, but it will somewhat retain its stance. It won't just act like it's made out of jelly. Now let's test it. I just pressed play and it seems that it's holding its shape and everything is working properly. I could drag it up into the air, and like I said, it retains its shape while bouncing and moving. Perfect. If I spawn a cube, I can interact with the model, I could shove it all over the place, but it will still try to stand up. Absolutely what we want. Now that all of that is over, it's time to attach our scripts. I put all of the scripts into a comment below this video. All you have to do is make your own C Sharp script, then just copy and paste whatever you see in the comments according to the script that you need to add. Now I'm going to explain the animator that I made for this model. I created different animations for the model in Blender, and I pieced them together here. You see all the words you see on the left side of the screen? Is jumping, is walking, and all that. You could copy those down. The last two you could leave alone, because I don't think I'm going to use them in this video. But those are basically the things that will control the animations. If you already know how this whole business works, you could skip this part and figure it out, but I'm gonna explain it here. Basically, all this is, is 
the idle animation just goes to the running animation if running is true and make sure that these parts are set up correctly and when it goes back make sure these are still set up right and it just goes here when running is false it goes here when jumping is true and goes back when jumping is false it goes to walking backwards when that parameter is true and back when it's false but when it goes from run to one of the other walking animations like when it goes to sidestep left it goes here when running forward is false and sidestepping is true like if you stop holding the w key and start pressing the a key then it will go to left however if you actually stop pressing the a key and start pressing the w key it will go back to run one if sidestepping is false in which case it will be false and it'll go back to run one and it'll work the same way for when it goes to every other running animation that is not um, the jumping animation here it just goes straight to jump because whether you're running or not you're going to be doing the jump animation if you're in the air and i forgot to set this up just set this to go here if running is true and jumping is false after you apply the ragdoll controller script to the base bone of the model you're turning into a ragdoll drag in the prefab version of the model rename it to mirror if you want and give it the same animator that i was explaining earlier or your own version of it you know what i mean afterward give it the ragdoll controller as well and assign the animator then assign the animator to the ragdoll model and then what you want to do is assign all of the values the values for the speed you could ignore the strafe speed uh that's what was in the code that i used from the tutorial that i watched but i didn't really make it function and you could set the jump force to somewhere around 3000 i didn't do that here but you can and then right below that drag and drop the bone base into this here slot now as you can see if i press the w key i go forward and if i press the a or w key i go left and right the s key i'm able to go backwards i'm finally able to move and you could see the model on the left actually animating as i press these keys now all we have to do is make the ragdoll's limbs reflect the limbs of the animating model grab the bones from the base to the head the upper arms and upper legs and give them the ragdoll animator script then what you want to do is you want to open the bones on the animating model and here when it asks you for the reflect limb drag and drop the same limbs from the animating model um, that you have selected on your ragdoll model this will be the same limb that the ragdoll model's bones copy so make sure that they're reflecting the same limb as the other model or it's not going to work. Now if it looks like your character spent the last week under the Empire State Building, don't panic. This is just because you have to reorient the rotation of the limbs, but it's very simple to do. Grab the upper arms and the upper legs and just set all of the rotation to zero. If you did this with other limbs, it may rotate in other weird ways that can't be fixed as easily. It'll just take a lot of dabbling and a lot of patience, but if you've done it right, then your model will be properly aligned, and when you press the right keys, even if it looks really weird, it will now animate accordingly. Now, I just added a camera with um, the camera script, so where it's following the player and I extended the plane, but now as you can see, he's running properly, and it is all working together now. If you want the limbs to slide around a little bit instead of gripping the floor so hard and making it look weird, you can apply a physics material and make it slippery. And now it looks great, but let's not forget jumping. All you have to do is select the two feet of the model and apply the ragdoll jump assist component to them. And after it asks for the animator, just assign that. And that's basically all you have to do. Just make sure that you name the ground. Make sure that the layer of the ground is called, well, ground. And if you want, you can also tag the ground. Ground just to be extra safe. 
probably won't do anything, but that's what I did. Because I was still trying to figure this out, but like I said, just make sure that the ground is layered ground, and make sure that the two feet have those scripts on them, and it should jump. If it doesn't, just copy everything in the scene that you have here, go to a new scene and paste it, because that's what I did when it didn't work for God only knows why, and it did work, so don't worry too much about it if it does that. After I did this very thing, I have actually found that I'm able to jump. And also, I just grabbed the base bone and froze the rotation on everything so that it wouldn't flop around quite as bad and keep the camera more steady. Um, you can use any 3D, three third person camera script that you have, just attach it to the base bone and have it follow it around. And that's basically all you have to do. As further proof that you can do this on any model, I created my complete own model of Godzilla and did the same thing, and it works. I even managed to incorporate some atomic breath into the design. Anyways, have a great day. Please like and subscribe, and if anything is confusing, please let me know in the comments and I'll help you to the best of my abilities. Have a great day, and bye!